Hello, my name is Chris and I'm both a river scientist and a lecturer in physical geography at UWE Bristol. Welcome to the last of a series of five mini lectures about drainage basin hydrology that are designed to help anyone studying A-level geography. Before you go any further, please make sure that you have watched the lectures that come before this one and that you have a copy of the worksheets that go along with the lectures so that you can fill them in as we go and finish with a complete set of notes for you to revise from. You can find a link to the worksheets below, as well as links to the other four lectures in this series. OK, let's get started with Lecture 5, Human Factors Affecting Drainage Basin Hydrology. As we explored in Lecture 3, some drainage basins have high levels of storm flow and low levels of base flow and are known as flashy or responsive catchments, whilst others have low levels of storm flow and high levels of base flow and are known as unflashy or unresponsive catchments. Most drainage basins lie somewhere between these two extreme states and how flashy a drainage basin is depends on both natural and human factors. Just like we did for natural factors, we can explore the human factors responsible for how flashy a catchment is by examining each stage of the drainage basin hydrological cycle, which we covered in detail in lecture two. Okay, let's start with precipitation. Humans are influencing the intensity of storm events as part of global climate change. Global climate is changing as a result of increased carbon emissions from human activities. The UK climate projections predict that the UK will experience significant increases in precipit in precipitation intensity in the future. This increase in precipitation intensity is likely to increase the flashiness of our drainage basins. Now, let's move on to how humans can affect the processes of interception, transpiration, and evaporation. Firstly, deforestation. The artificial removal of vegetation results in less precipitation being intercepted, speeding up the movement of water onto hill slopes and therefore into river channels. In addition, less vegetation means that less intercepted water is turned into water vapour via evaporation, and less of the water in the soil is converted into water vapour via transpiration. Both the reduction in interception and the reduction in transpiration means that drainage basins with deforestation have higher levels of storm flow, resulting in a flashier drainage basin. Research by Lee et al. in 2007 showed that deforestation within the Niger and Lake Chad basins in West Africa would result in a 160% increase in runoff from hill slopes. We can see in this graph on the right that the level of runoff under the control conditions with no deforestation is much lower than the level of runoff under conditions where 100% of the current vegetation is removed. This is despite the fact that less than 5% of the drainage basins are currently forested, as shown in the map on the left. The planting of vegetation, otherwise known as afforestation, can result in the opposite impact of deforestation. It can in increase interception and increase transpiration. As a result, afforestation can be a useful tool for reducing how flashy a drainage basin is because it reduces the volume of storm flow entering river channels. Research by Jackson et al. in 2008 showed how planting tree belts, which are small strips of trees like these, at certain points on hill slopes in mid Wales, reduced flood peaks by 40%. We can see in this graph at the bottom that the runoff with tree strips present, which shows is the dashed line, is much less than with no tree strips present, which is the solid black line. 
showing the impact that uh, afforestation of tree strips can have. Now, let's consider how humans can impact the process of overland flow, infiltration and through flow. The growth of urban areas typically leads to an increase in impermeable surfaces on hill slopes, which increases the amount of overland flow entering rivers quickly as storm flow. Additionally, artificial drainage systems within urban areas increases the speed of through flow. Both of these factors increase the amount of storm flow, which results in urbanized drainage basins being much flashier than natural drainage basins. It is possible for us to reduce the impact of urban areas on drainage basin hydrology through the use of sustainable urban drainage systems, otherwise known as SUDs. These are a range of techniques, including green roofs and pervious pavements, which are designed to reduce peak hill slope runoff rates by increasing the infiltration capacity of the hill slope surface. As a result, their use reduces the flashiness of a drainage basin. An additional benefit of suds is that they also reduce water pollution entering river systems. Research by Yato Espino et al. in 2016 within the city of Donostia in northern Spain demonstrated the usefulness of suds in reducing the volume of water generated after a rainfall event and their ability to prevent localised flooding. The top graph shows how the peak flow with green roofs in light blue was lower than the peak flow without green roofs in dark blue. Similarly, the bottom graph shows how the peak flow with permeable paving in light blue was lower than the peak flow without permeable paving in dark blue. Intensive agricultural activities like high density livestock farming and mechanised ploughing can result in the compaction of soils on hill slopes which reduces their infiltration capacity. This increases the amount of overland flow moving down hill slopes. In addition, the use of artificial subsurface drainage to enable formerly boggy ground to be farmed increases the speed of through flow down hill slopes. This increase in overland and through flow as a result of intensive agriculture can create flashier drainage basins like this. Research by Holman et al in 2003 explored how soil degradation due to agriculture contributed to the 2000 floods in England and Wales. Their research within the Yorkshire Ouse, Severn, Bourne and Uck catchments showed that runoff rates following the application of intensive agriculture practices, this solid line, were higher than those without their application, so without intensive agriculture practices, which is shown by this dashed line. Finally, let's consider how humans can influence the way water travels along river channels. Dams can be constructed to hold back the progress of storm flow through a river channel network. These can be large scale engineered dams like this one, or collections of micro scale leaky dams like this one. By slowing the progress of storm flow through a river channel network, the use of dams results in a less flashy drainage basin. Based on what we've explored above, we can see that we have the ability to affect the speed with which water reaches drainage basin outlets. Management techniques like tree belts, suds and leaky dams can be used to reduce the flashiness of a drainage basin to help reduce the likelihood of flooding. 
However, as shown in research by Dixon et al. in 2016, we need to be really careful about where in the drainage basin we apply these management techniques. If we apply techniques that slow down the arrival of water from hill slopes near the catchment outlet, like this area shown in red, this may cause that water, which previously would have formed an early part of the rising limb of the hydrograph, to be delayed so that it now arrives at the same time as the main flood peak, as shown in this graph on the left. This would actually increase the likelihood of flooding. Instead, we therefore need to focus on slowing down the water from areas of the catchment that currently con already contribute to the main flood peak, like this area in blue. This will then result in the flood peak being reduced, as that, that water that was previously arriving during the main flood peak would now be arriving later in the falling limb, as shown in this graph on the right. You can learn more about the human factors affecting drainage basin hydrology by completing this activity that is described in your worksheet. This activity makes use of information describing the characteristics of drainage basins for each of the flow gauges hosted on the National River Flow Archive. Additionally, to learn even more about the factors that affect drainage basin hydrology, please try out this excellent interactive story map that has been put together by my colleagues Harry West and Neville Quinn. OK, thank you for listening. You have now completed all five of these lectures about drainage basin hydrology. I hope that you have found them both interesting and useful.